Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm going to roast a little Cornish chicken. Here's my little Cornish chicken right there. See my little Cornish chicken? Me, me and the dog, <laughs> Miss Lily, here you go. Come on. There she is, Miss Lily. Me and Miss Lily, part of our diet, part of our weight loss program. For those of you guys that don't know, I was 527 pounds. I'm down around 500 right now. I'm down about 27 pounds. I got down to 500. I put a couple back on, celebrated a bit too much, partied a little too hardy for the old boy. So I'm now turning around and trying to really cut back today, like today for lunch. I had uh, a couple pieces of raw broccoli and a handful of grapes. That was my lunch today. Uh, my breakfast today was three eggs scrambled with a slice of uh, a Kraft single wrapped up in a, uh, you know, in a, in a flour tortilla thing. Made a little breakfast burrito kind of deal. So that was breakfast. So uh, my, my caloric intake is going to way down today. Not really sure what I'm going to do for a veggie to go along with my bird. My little Cornish game hen. You can see my little Cornish game hen right there. Don't know what I'm going to do with that, but uh, don't know yet. I don't want to do potatoes. I don't want a lot of carbs. I have, I think I have some Brussels sprouts. Ooh, I got some asparagus. There we go. I'll do the asparagus. They're going to go bad if I don't use them soon anyway. So anyhow, let's get cooking. You want me to throw the ball for you, huh? Come on, pick it up. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Come on. No, you got to give it to me. Give me the ball. Come on. All right, come on. I can't throw it with a dam. I don't know. Where'd the ball go? There it is. All right, give me the ball. There we go. Come on. <laughs> like I said, I can't throw worth it now. <clears throat> all right, so I got my asparagus all prepared. This is what the asparagus looks like. I got it on my broiler pan for my toaster oven. It's got a little peanut oil on it and some uh, little salt and pepper. That's all. Now, once the... Uh, once the little Cornish is pretty much together, you see she's in there getting her sauna. Once she's together, when we're going to give her 45 minutes, and we'll slip this in there for the last 15, and one hour should do it for everything. <sighs> Got to have something to drink. A little cocktail before my bird is ready so i think i'm going to have <clears throat> vermouth and i got a little gin left <clears throat> for those of you guys that don't recognize vermouth and gin that usually equates to a martini. Where's my shaker? Ah, there it is. Hello, shaker. Shaker. So, how do you make a martini? Let me show you. I know I'm out of picture. I'm sorry, but I had to step over here to the freezer, get some ice. First thing we need. Make sure this is clean. It sounds, smells like it could use a good rinse. Huh. Funkiness in there, man. Some funkiness in there. I think I was in a bit of a hurry with them doing the plumbing to put away dishes the other day. And I probably put the cap on this while it was still wet inside. 
And so, and that sponge I was using, I got a, got a new sponge now. My sponge I was using back then was kind of, ah, much better. Much, much better than new. Yep, that smells good too. Okay. Let me clean that out, clean the cap out. All righty then. So, first thing we need for a martini is ice. And I like to use about half a tray of ice. Next, vermouth. Now, let me show you the secret with vermouth. Yeah, you put about a glob, okay, about a glob's worth of uh, of uh, that in there. Put the cap on. Put the cap on the cap. You no doubt seen this action before, okay? Got it really cold. Now, what do I do? I get rid of all the vermouth. You don't want that. You just wanted enough vermouth in there to give a little coating on the glass and on the ice. Next, we're going to put in, sadly, the last of my gin. The very last of my gin. Cap that. Cap that. That same ice that now has the essence, the essence of vermouth on it. We shake that up. Now that's cold. Look how frosted this thing is. That's really cold. Now I don't have a proper martini glass because I'm kind of broke right now. So I have a Chivas Regal glass. Thanks to a good friend of mine. He gave me a bunch of stuff while I was out on my boat. We're now pouring the very, very cold gin into the glass. Almost had that where you could see it in the frame, but so now we have a glass. Cheers. That tastes delicious, but it's still missing something. Anybody out there know what's missing? Huh? Do you? Do you? Do you? You think you do? Huh? What is it? Put it in the comments down below. What is that martini missing? See if you can guess it before I put it in there. Olives. Now, I don't have... I don't have small martini uh, olives. I just, I don't, I'm a big guy. I get these big queen olives. The queen olives with pimento in them. And I put enough of them in there to make a snack. Four, five, six. And olives, contrary to a lot of people's beliefs, do not need refrigeration. Just stick it back up on the shelf. It doesn't say on the container to refrigerate after opening. Why are you sticking them in your refrigerator? They're pickled. You can smell it. They're pickled. Craziness. All right. Now, I had a little interruption there by my timer. Telling me it was time to put the Brussels sprouts, put the Brussels sprouts in the oven. So we're going to do that. I'm going to tilt you guys way down here. You can see that, okay? So, I have, uh, I'm sorry, not Brussels sprouts, asparagus. I've got asparagus, I've got a little bit of uh, peanut oil on them, salt and pepper, okay? My bird has been in there for uh, 45 minutes now. So she's ought to be just about done. We're going to slide these in there on the shelf beneath her for the last 15 minutes. Yep, for the last 15 minutes, we'll have the asparagus in it. Now, while I was while I was getting the bird ready, I was sitting here sitting here at my chair at the table, 
in my big kitchen. <laughs> I have a nice big kitchen. And while well, sitting here at my table in my nice big kitchen, I don't know how cravings happen for you, but for me, I just, the back of my mouth, I got this olive gin martini taste in the back of my mouth, and I'm thinking to myself, man, martini would be really ideal tonight. Now, I must admit, guys, I am celebrating a little bit this evening. I've been working on a real estate deal Looks like it's coming together. Tomorrow we're gonna meet and sign some papers. All goes well. Big, big payday for grandpa. So that's a cool thing. So I'm a little, little yeah, apprehensive. I mean, it ain't, it ain't done yet, but you know what? Whether it happens or not, okay? Whether it happens or not, the fact is, every, I don't know what her problem is, be quiet. The fact is, is my system, my work ethic, my, my work plan, my plan that I've been working day by day by day for the last, well now, let's see, what's it been? 21 days, three weeks. Well, it hasn't been very long. I mean, I really should be more patient than that. And, and, and really, I kind of had it set in my mind that it was going to be, you know, three months two and a half, three months before I was gonna see any results to the effort that I'm putting out right now, but 21 days, wow. 21 days, it's not a huge deal, but you know what, it's, it's a nibble, okay? It's a nibble. I've been fishing for three weeks, I got a nibble on the line. That's awesome, that tells me I'm on the right lake and I got the right bait, right? So that's 90% of the battle. Now it's just a matter of setting the hook, right? Cheers. So all my effort, everything I've been doing is correct. Getting that big, what's the word for it? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, confirmation, getting that big confirmation that what I'm doing is correct and working and has been working it's worked before in other states. It's working here. Sadly, Ohio doesn't have huge property values like some places I could have worked, but it is what it is. You know what? I recorded a poem this morning. This morning, I recorded a poem, and I put it on my YouTube channel. My grandpa reads. Uh, by the way, I'm changing that channel's name. Grandpa reads for you. That's the new channel name, number four and the letter U. Grandpa reads for you. Uh, I have, uh, I, I set up an Instagram. I set up a TikTok. <laughs> Whoever thunk it that this old 63 year old fat old geezer would have a TikTok account. Surprised the hell out of me to be honest with you, but I have TikTok and I have Instagram and I have subscribers to those already, which blows my mind. But I did a Grandpa Reads, and I did a poem about going to bed. It was about, you know, the, the lament that so many children run into. It's summertime. It's still daylight outside. Why do I have to go to bed at 9 o'clock? It's still light outside. There's birds outside chirping. The sun is still up. Why do I got to go to bed at 9 o'clock? Well, unfortunately, a lot of kids these days don't have to go to bed at 9 o'clock. But when this poem was written by Robert Louis Stevenson in 17 something kids went to bed at eight o'clock because that's what they did back then but we should be doing in fact today jmho <laughs> oh man am i not with it today or what wow so anyhow read this poem from my granddaughter posted it onto my youtube my grandpa reads for you channel my TikTok, and my instagram and uh, got some favorable responses. My granddaughter said, oh, I love my grandpa. And I thought that just made my whole day. Made my whole day. That little girl, she has got me wrapped so tight around her. I mean, 
The other day she was out in the yard playing and she got her hands dirty and she just came over and wiped them on my pant leg and I was just fine with that. Just fine. I was just thrilled to be there to have a pant leg that she could wipe her hands on. If that tells you a little bit about what kind of grandpa I am, my little granddaughter, she just, she sets the moon and she's in charge of the world as far as I'm concerned. To a point, I, I'm not going to let her do anything that hurts me or her. And I recognize that she needs to have some restrictions in life, not to be abusive to people. But anyhow, so I'm celebrating that great success that I had. I'm here in Ohio. My real estate stuff's working, enjoying a martini. You just got to watch me make cooking my bird, having some asparagus with that, celebrating a little bit this evening on my success. Tomorrow, I'm gonna go meet with this guy, sign some docs, that'll be great. If we sign docs, if we don't, if we don't, it's still great because at least at least the phone rang, okay? The phone rang, I had it at back. I got up there and I took my, I'm gonna take my swings tomorrow. Actually, I took some swings today, I'm gonna take more swings tomorrow. I have an at back. Getting to the ballpark, getting your clothes on and your gear on and going out on the field and getting an at back, that's huge, guys. That's huge. Showing up's 90% of the battle. So I'm, I'm thrilled that I have the opportunity to show up. <laughs> Don't know what that was all about. Actually, I do know what that was all about. Miss Lily goes out in the yard. We, we have feral cats that poop in the yard around here. And she goes out and eats the cat poop. And then she comes in and she throws up on my floors. She throws up cat poop on my floors. It's such a lovely gift. It really is. The gift that just keeps on giving, too. No matter how much I clean it up. So bad, so much so that I've, I'm, I'm about to order a carpet cleaner, <clears throat> you know, appliance thing so I can clean my carpets. I clean it up as best I can with paper towels and spray and whatever, but I think I'm going to get one of them, you know, Bissell steam cleaner things just to chase the dog around with. Oh gosh, it's so good. So I'm making my dinner. I put the bird in the oven. I got this taste for a martini. I figured I had to have a martini. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't remember, I see a lot of these channels where people show you about cooking. You don't see too many channels where people show you how to make a cocktail. I'm sure they're out there. There's probably thousands of them. I just don't watch them. I don't see them. So, And it's a good thing, too, because I'd be dead if I did. I mean, I'd be stocking up and setting up a whole bar and have all the bar tools and stuff. Martinis are simple, man. All you need is a shaker. That's all you need is a shaker. Gin and vermouth and a shaker. Now, you could do a vodka martini as well. You could do vodka... And then they have all kinds of, you could put a little piece of orange peel, a little piece of lemon peel on there. You could, you could, you could rim the glass with a little orange or a little lemon if you want to add a little extra level of flavor. I find it detracts from the saltiness of the olives. I kind of like, you remember when we were kids and we had Cracker Jacks? Do you remember that? You'd eat that whole box of that, you know, caramelized popcorn to get to the gift at the bottom, the present, the little package at the bottom, right? Well, the olives, guys, are an adult version of that. The olives are the, the little present at the bottom of the glass. They really are. They really are. So, I enjoy my martini, but I really enjoy... Now, truth be told, guys, this is one huge MF martini, okay? You normally would not pour nearly this much gin in there, but as you saw, I was just finishing up the bottle. There was <clears throat> there was probably two martinis in that bottle that was left, but, you know, I just... Let's go ahead and finish it, so... I'll call up tomorrow, and I'll order some more gin to be delivered, and... Really love delivery, guys. I don't know if you guys use Instacart. I'm telling you, these guys are awesome. Don't even have to make a phone call. Get on my computer, type up what I want, go to Kroger's. This is my grocery list. 
go to the liquor store. This is my liquor list, whatever I want. Uh, hundreds of stores here in the area. And the little shopper goes out there and they pick all the stuff up and they bring it and they put it right here. They bring it right, they, they bring it right to that door. Okay, they bring it right to my door. All I have to do is take the packages from my door and bring them in. Best 10 bucks I ever spent, I can assure you of that. Especially now with the COVID and all that nonsense going on. No, I'm not far. I'm only like 15 minutes from the grocery store. I could easily drive over there and pick it up. It is in the next town. I'm in Pleasantville. It's in Lancaster. Lancaster, if you're from Ohio. It's Lancaster. But, uh, yeah, that that's money well spent. Money well spent, so... All right, well, you know, I've been intentionally, <laughs> I'm using you guys, okay? I'm using you guys big time. I'm so bad. I really am so bad. I'm using you guys. I can see my timer here, and this clip that we've been recording right now is exactly 12 minutes and 7 seconds, 8 seconds, 9 seconds long. <clears throat> I have to let the asparagus be in there for 15 minutes. I got 3 minutes left. So... What to do? Guess I'll have to drink some more martini. Now, I do sit here after work. I like getting out of my chair in the office and sitting on these chairs out here. They're very stiff and uncomfortable. They're not made for long-term, you know, kickback comfort. But it's just setting your body in a different position for a while, you know? And I sit here and I listen to my my Alexa. I have an Alexa. Alexa, what time is it? It's 6.21 p.m. Enjoy Maybe. your evening. Well, I thank you, Alexa, and you enjoy yours, too. So now you know what time it is here. Alexa, what day is it? Today is Tuesday, September 21st. There you go. So 6 something p.m. on Tuesday. <clears throat> Anyhow, I, I usually have Alexa play music for me or read. She reads for me. We've been, we've been uh, listening to a reading of Hamlet by Willie, Willie Wiggle Q. For those guys that don't know, that's William Shakespeare, Willie Wiggle Q. Um, alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. A man in infinite jest. A thousand times he bore me on his shoulder. I know my Hamlet, see? <laughs> oh, man. Actually, the graveyard scene is one of my favorite in that. So, it really is. Woman, thy name is Frailty. Hamlet, William Shakespeare. Also applicable in so many levels. In so many levels, but... Of course, women today aren't so frail like they used to be, are they? I miss that. Sorry, wet ladies. I miss that. There was a time where men walked all along the curb and kept the woman to the inside on the sidewalk to protect her from whatever was happening out on the street. <clears throat> Nowadays, actually, I'll give you an example. <laughs> give me an example of that thing. Very funny. So I'm at work today, right? And uh, I do a call center work for a company that manufactures furniture and household stuff, kitchen appliances, a whole bunch of different things. And uh, this woman was waiting for a sofa to be delivered, okay? And it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. Folks, today, everything's getting delayed and delayed and delayed. Shipping is way behind. Trucking is way behind. Everything is getting delayed, delayed, delayed. So she, she, instead of the woman who, the customer calling, her mother called us today. And I had to transfer the call to a supervisor, okay? Which is something I do five, six, eight times a day, probably. Transfer some calls to supervisors for, you know, you'll talk to them, you'll explain to them what's going on and what's happening. And they'll, some of them are okay, some of them get escalated. I want to talk to your manager. <clears throat> so, okay. Mom wanted to talk to the manager. So I get on my part of my computer that 
is where I put in my information so that a supervisor will see it and pick up and talk to the school about it. And I put on there that uh, we call them OO, the, the original order, OO. So I put OO's mom on the line. <laughs> Not the original order. Get down. Get down. Good girl. Not the original order, but OO's mom on the line to talk to a supervisor. And you know them dirty dogs, not a single supervisor would pick up. Not one, not one. Those people were so chick and shit. Not a single, su normally when I get on there and I say, hey, I've got somebody who wants to talk to a lead. I mean, sometimes I wait, you know, but we, we have a gatekeeper. We have a gatekeeper that you first go to and then she takes a quick look at it and decides whether it should go to a supervisor or not. Quite often, that person will kick it back to you and say, well, deal with this yourself. And, of course, that's the last thing your customer wants to hear is, I'm sorry, a lead doesn't have time to talk to you, so I'm going to have to bullshit you with whatever's going on here. Uh, I mean, I tell them what I can tell them. You know, your order's delayed. You know, it's coming over from China, and they haven't made the thing yet. So they're waiting on this, that, and the other thing and hasn't gotten here yet. Or, or lately, it's been a lot of, you know, it's in a truck. It's in a truck in San Francisco, somewhere between San Francisco and New York. It's in that great void between the mountains, folks. It's on its way. It may get there sometime, but think about February, okay? Anyhow, so I put this re request into a lead. I said, OO's mother on the phone. And none of them son of a guns would answer. Nobody picked up on that. I sat for 15 damn minutes. Mind you, every two or three minutes, I got to pick up the phone and say, I'm sorry, ma'am, for the continued wait, but... Please stand by. We'll hopefully get to talk to a supervisor here soon. Please continue to hold and put them on hold again. And three minutes later, I did the same thing and same thing and same thing and same thing. And OMG. Funny. Nobody would talk to mom. They were chicken. They were afraid to talk to mom. That's what that was all about. All right, guys. It's now been 18 minutes, so I'm sure this is probably done. So... I'm going to make a cut here, which means I'm stopping my camera while I go check on everything before I pull it out and shoot the next scene. So, a little behind the scenes stuff. Maybe I'll put that in bloopers. I don't know. Hold on, guys. I'll be back with you in a minute. All righty then, asparagus. That all looks like it's completely cooked. And check it a little. Chicken Little is doing good here. She looks like she's all nice and crispy and yummy. All right, I'm going to play her up. Hold on. All right, a little change of scenery. We're now at my desk. Chicken Little and a big old pile of asparagus. Yummy, yummy. All righty then. So, we're now in my orifice, office. And uh, time for a little consumption. Yes, indeed, a little consumption. So we have Chicken Little and Asparagus here. Now, normally I would do a two camera setup and I will have one camera on the plate, one camera up here, and I'd go to edit and I'd cut back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And friends, that's a huge PIA. You're worth it. Don't get me wrong. It's not that you're not worth me doing all that effort. You certainly are. And I must admit that I, I am remiss in my duties as a YouTuber to, um, to not be doing that. But, but, you know the old saying, everything after the, everything before the butt was a lie? not a lie. In this case, you guys really are do that, but I'm not, I'm just not going to. That was much too large of a martini. And, uh, before I start chicken little, I get to have an olive. Hmm. Tell you, I think the people, come on, there you go. 
I think the people that live in California are are fucking nuts. Okay, I think they're fucking nuts for living there. Biggest screwed up state I've ever seen. But the one thing Californians have that I'm very jealous of is the ability to grow olives. Hmm. Now, as a kid growing up, in California olives wasn't a thing. If you wanted olives, you got them from Greece. Greek olives, Italian olives, Mediterranean. But now, there's massive olive orchards in California. At least there was. They're running into some issues like anybody else does, but get these phenomenal queen olives. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm. Like I said, the present at the bottom of the package. So, all right, let's get into Lady Bird here. Chicken wing. <laughs> Drummer. It's a light leg. Cornish, Cornish game hen, man. They're tiny. Be careful, that little dude. He'll get you every time. <clears throat> that right there is the bone that creates more pe more trouble for people eating poultry. It's the little bone that runs alongside the leg. With that little size, it's not the leg bone. Usually, that's not a problem. It's that little sucker there. That gets people in trouble every time. It's a, it's a son of a bitch. Though. It just really is. Okay, get our other leg. Come loose of the thigh. Very good. Yummy, yumminess. Unbelievable yumminess. It's on the inside. Just so you know. There it is, dirty dog. All right, one of my favorite things about eating chicken, chicken wings. But you really can't do a buffalo wing with a Cornish game hen. They're just too small. On the wing, that's another bone that gets you in trouble. You gotta be patient, take your time, go slow. Clean them bones down. Now, just a little bit. There's a little bit around the edge here. Cleaning that off is like, you know in Chinese food, you get the little mini corners of the cob. It's like trying to eat the corn off the cob on a little mini ear. That's what that's like, trying, trying to get that little bit right there. Good stuff, though. Really good stuff. All right. Here's another one. I, I, I break it open. I pull the little bone, a little twist. It pops off. And then the big bone. It pops off. Big piece of meat. Mmm. And the corn off the cob. Yummy. Mmm. So good. All right. A little asparagus. Mmm. 
Now, one of my ex-wives did not like eating green beans because they were squeaky. Pilot, you hear that? Got a friend of mine out there, Pilot. Waukesha Pilot Earl. You know what that sound is, brother? Cheers. Oh, man. All right. She didn't like eating green beans because they were squeaky. Well, you know what? Spur guy's squeaky, too. And I love it. And I love eating green beans. And you know what? I ate a lot of green beans because nobody else would eat them in the house. Because she didn't like them because they were squeaky. And her daughter wouldn't eat anything she would eat. Here's the neighbors talking. The dog's getting excited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you haven't had roasted asparagus. Now, I much prefer it charcoal grill. The asparagus on the grill, absolutely incredible. It gives it a, a little bit drier caramelization than what I'm doing right now, but still, this is just phenomenal. Mm. Mm. That's just so juicy. It really is. So juicy. Big load, big load. Mm. It's so good, it almost makes you want to cry. I mean, it's just, got a one on my shirt. It's just that good. Um, a lot of people aren't, uh, aren't fans of asparagus. Um, I can assure you, one of the very first things I'm going to plant when I buy some property here, my my next my next acquisition, I'm going to be buying myself my forever home. First thing that's going to go in the ground is going to be an asparagus bed. Used to have 280 acres here in Ohio. We had asparagus that grew wild up along the highway, and I loved it. Oh, gosh, it was so good. Go out there and cut those stems and bring that fresh asparagus in for dinner. Mm. But... These are really nice, young, tender asparagus. They're very small diameter. And that small diameter makes them very tender. So they're really good. Mm. When you get asparagus, it comes really in a long stem. The thing to do is to grab it in the middle and then take the, the thicker end, the, the root end of it, and, and bend it and bend it. And when it bends, it'll snap. Where it snaps is the edible part from the unedible part, okay? Don't go to the grocery store and buy the asparagus and cook the whole thing. You're not gonna like it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be woody and, and not good at all. But you take that asparagus, this, this asparagus, okay, let me show you here. This asparagus was probably, probably that long when I bought it, okay? Mm, so good. So what I did, I looked at the bundle of asparagus. Now when I shop asparagus, I look for the, the a nice size bundle that has the smallest diameter asparagus I can find. <clears throat> I don't want the asparagus this big around. I want the asparagus smaller than that big around. Okay. <coughs> One more second. Got some salt in the wrong spot. So you want to buy the thinner, the thinnest uh, asparagus you can. <coughs> Fairly long. You'll break it. You grab it in the middle, and you break off the bottom. Separate that off. Once you've broken one or two or three of them to establish a baseline, 
You can then put that down on your whole stack of asparagus, see where that line is, take a knife and whack off. Then cut off and remove all of the rest of it that's that way. And just discard that. Give, give that to your piggies, give that to your chickens, they will love it, okay? And then you end up with the most tenderest parts. Mmm. And they really are. Tender, and they've got the flavor. So, and I love asparagus. I mean, I eat it by the, I mean, I could, I could sit down and eat a ton of asparagus for dinner. I mean, just, just nothing else but asparagus. Mmm. Kind of like spaghetti, you kind of kind of work it to get it in there, but so good, so good. So I prefer it grilled. Fried is my next biggest choice, uh, or roasted rather is my next biggest choice, and then fried is my least favorite, but sometimes you got no other choice but to put it in a skillet. Um, but putting it on charcoal is without a doubt a, an excellent way of eating asparagus. Mm. Now I know I'm losing, trying to lose weight. I'm working very hard and I'm having good success with that. I am, I'm having good success with that. But this was three. I'm going to say this was three servings of asparagus that I'm eating tonight. Last piece. So the question becomes why? You know, why pig out on asparagus? There's so many other things I could be eating. Why pig out on asparagus? Well, a couple of reasons. One, the only way you can buy asparagus is to buy it in a big bundle, about, about yay big. You can't buy it in smaller pieces. It just only comes in these like, I want to say one pound, but I don't think weight has anything to do with it. That You know, it, 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 it's a bundle about that big around. Of asparagus, whether they're small ones or whether they're big ones, it's, it's always about the same size around. Um, and and you can't buy a half of that or a quarter of that. And if you don't eat it all while it's fresh and ready, it it, it tends to go bad pretty quickly. The tops on it tend to start getting mushy and not real pleasant, and so. So when I get asparagus, I know it's going to be a lot, which is why it's the only vegetable I'll do at a particular dinner. I'll, I'll do asparagus and nothing else. So, But now, I have the rest of Chicken Little. And I'm stealing the best parts off the bird. What's the best part? The skin. Mmm. Where's the flavor? Where's the calories? It's in the skin. And more so than in the skin, it's in this little puppy right here. The tail. When I was a kid growing up, <laughs> we never had the opportunity to get the tail. That always went to mom. Mom got the tail. Turkey, chicken, Cornish game hen, it mattered not. If there was a turkey, if there was a tail involved, it went to mom. And she cherished her tails. I'm not going to go there. Mom cherished the tails off her poultry. She would, you know, bake a bite on one side and bite on the other. 
And this is like the juiciest, crispiest, oiliest, crispiest little, you know, texturally phenomenal, super flavorful little premise. Now, this has to be a properly processed chicken. That means you remove the oil gland from the chicken before you roast it. Some chickens, they don't do that. You gotta be careful. If you don't know what an oil gland, gland is, well, Google it and find out. You gotta make sure the oil gland has been removed so you don't get that, you know, funky flavor from it. But yeah, mom would always eat the tails off of the Thanksgiving turkey, roasted chicken, Cornish game hens. In fact, I remember as a kid when we would do Cornish game hens, mom would make one hen for everybody. One, everybody would get one hen because it's about a serving. I mean, a Cornish game hen is about a serving. By the time you peel it and pluck it and take all the meat off of it, you're only talking about four, maybe six ounces of meat. I mean, it's really not much on there. So mom would get the tails. Everybody would pull, pluck off the tails and pass them up the table to mom and mom would eat them. Now, she taught us, she taught us when we were young kids that the tails were no good. She taught us that she was saving us from eating the tails off the chicken. That they were nothing more than depositories of grease and nastiness. Mama lied. My mama lied. The tails are friggin' awesome. You get a chicken tail or a duck tail or a turkey tail, a goose tail. You get a crispy tail off of a goose, it is nirvana. It is phenomenal. I mean, there's a lot of people that will render the, the lard off of a goose and use that for cooking because it is, it's elite, okay? The, the, the oil off of that goose is elite, it's that good. So mom would have us pass all the tails, chicken, turkey, ducks, goose, whatever we were eating, mom got the tail. Mom was a whore. Gosh darn, now that I'm older in life and I understand the nuances of that. Phenomenal. You know, the tail of a goose. It's like the olive of a martini. Mm. It is. It's the creme de la creme. Okay? Do you understand that? It's the creme de la creme. It's the cream of the cream. It's the best. It's, 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 it's the essence of the bird. The tail on the chicken is the essence of the chicken. It's the best part. Like an olive is to a martini. Mm. So is the tail to the chicken, or the game hen, or the duck, or the turkey, but especially the Christmas goose. If you're smart enough and wise enough <clears throat> to contact a local farmer who's raising free-range geese that are not eating a soybean meal, that aren't eating a, a commercial brand, brand of food, if you find a someone who's raising some geese for Christmas and they're raising them the old German way where they're feeding them barley, spent brewer's grain, it's pretty much free and it's awesome food for geese. You roast that goose, you cook it, you cook it down. Look at that. Even my dog is salivating on the idea of a goose tail, aren't you? You like that? Ooh, yeah. Even my dog is salivating at the idea of having that tail off of a goose. You have that roast goose for Christmas raised by a farmer who knows what he's doing. That tail is the essence. It's the epitome of perfection. 
A lot of people will raise geese and render the goose lard down and try to make that into uh, a, an oil. And you know, if you've ever had, hmm, having a little bit of skin off my chicken. If you've ever had a, uh, if you ever had a goose for dinner and you waited and got that little tail piece off the back of it, or if you're eating a Cornish game hen and you're waiting for the most succulent pieces. The leg. They're awesome. But they ain't it. The breast. Big old chunk of meat. Big old chunk of meat. Mm. Mm. It's like an orgy in your mouth. I mean, it really is. <clears throat> but it ain't it. The tail is the culmination. It's the essence. It's it's the it's the perfection of the bird. And that always went to my mom. She lied. She lied to us. She flat out lied to us. Mm. Now here I am eating all this phenomenal skin off of my off of my bird here. Okay, there's my bird. Eating off of all all of the skin off of my bird. And, and I got to admit, it it is taste wise. Texture-wise, it's phenomenal. It's it's just it's so good. It really is. But when you get down into it, let me, let me get down into it. Hmm. You know what that is? You know what that is? I remember as a kid, we let these dry. It was a big deal to us. It was a very big deal to us. You you would let this you would let this dry. Okay. Put it off the corner, put it off the side of your plate, leave it there, let it dry. You don't eat it down. You'd waste it. Pull apart all the parts of the of the bird. No, that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I don't have my camera turned where I can show it to you right now, but there's a little bit of bone, a little bit of a little bit of leg, some more chicken breast. Um, taking all the parts. I missed my mouth. Mm. Taking all the parts of the bird. Taking all the parts of the bird, all the lovely, wonderful pieces. Mm -hmm. Making my bird look horrible. Taking big old chunks of that's a breast meat off of a Cornish game hen. And guys, that's a big piece of meat for a Cornish game hen. That's the single largest piece of meat that came off of this bird.
nothing more than a mouthful. And it's good. And it's healthy. You know, it's the other white meat. It's good. Low fat, low carb meat. But it's not. It's not the tail. It's it's not the essence. And so I guess that's the story I'm gonna co gonna kind of culminate with this tonight. I know I've I've gotten kind of weird this evening. I know that cleaning my mouth off, get all that off there. Mm. Let me let me show you my graveyard. Okay, there's my graveyard of a plate there. <clears throat> Folks, Mama lied. That essence, that culmination of all of this awesomeness stems in that tail. Like the bottom of my martini glass, it's nothing more than olive flavored gin at this point. Doesn't have the meat of the gin, the flavor, it doesn't have the meat of the olive. But that chicken is so good. That chicken is to chicken, chicken, chicken. I'm saying chicken. Guys, it's a Cornish game hen. This is not a chicken. This is a refined bird raised to perfection in its diminutive size. Unlike these Cornish cross, excuse me, wow, uh, belches, compliments to the chef, me, myself, uh, it's, 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 <sighs> the chicken is awesome, the mart martini is awesome. The best part of the martini is drinking the martini and the olives are icing on the cake, if you will. When you eat the chicken, the essence, the best part of the chicken is the tail. My mama lied growing up. She she would always steal from all of us. Stole. She tried to, she convinced us that it was no good. The tail was no good. She was saving us from having to eat the tail. Mom, I'm 63 years old. I know better now. You lied. Mom. <laughs> Anyhow. This is what's left of my bird. Mom called this the wishbone. You've heard of wishbone dressing. Well, this is the wishbone. Every poultry. Chicken, turkey, duck, goose has a wishbone. It's the very front of the breast area, the wishbone. Now they say, they say that whoever gets the top part of the wishbone, when you break it, if you pull it apart, see the two pieces flex, whichever piece gets the top bone of the wishbone, they get their wish. Their wish will come true. Now here's the rub. And a sadness to my lifestyle. I don't have somebody to share the wishbone with. Will you share it with? Will you? Will you stop by and share this wishbone with me? I'm going to take this wishbone. I'm going to put it on the shelf. I'm going to let it dry out so it will become very fragile. And it's going to sit there and wait until one of you visits me and shares the wishbone. Now, Miss Lily would like to share the wishbone. So you're there? You want to share the wishbone? Huh? Do you? Yeah. She wants the wishbone, but I know it's not good for her. And I've already eaten, as you can see, 
I've already eaten everything that is on the chicken. The bird is no more. The Cornish game hen is devoured. The asparagus is devoured. And in all of that, 583 calories on the bird. Um, I haven't run the calories on the asparagus, but I can't imagine it's very nice. A little bit of peanut oil on it, salt and pepper, zero butter, zero butter. I didn't put anything but salt on the Cornish game hen, so it has no added calories. I can't imagine this is more than a 700 calorie dinner, and I feasted, feasted on that. Now, I will grant you that, I, I don't know what the calories is, is in the very aggressive uh, martini that I poured. And now as a uh, finale to my dinner, to rinse it all down, I'm drinking a, a Yingling. My son turned me on to this beer, Yingling. He thought it was very good. I have to agree with him, it's not half bad. For an American-made beer. I'm on a Patriot tried and true, guys. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind drinking um, really good American beer, but let's face it: our water is young. We have young water. E even Samuel Adams beer, which is an old, an old brewery here in America, is still young water. Not we can do about that. So, anyway, I'm going to say this: next next person that comes and visits Grandpa, we will break the wishbone on this Cornish game hen. I'm going to save it for now. And with that said, kids, be good. Be careful. Take good care of one another, and we will have more for you tomorrow. I'm going to spend some time this evening now, try to edit this video and piece it together and put it out on my channel. So stay tuned. Thanks, kids. Bye.